In the last few days alone, we have had huge escalations towards even more conflict and more problems. In fact, let me just read out some of the things I wrote down earlier this morning. Um, nuclear countries are starting to band together. Yes, they're starting to come together. That is not good. We've also had a report out overnight, Russian nuclear subs in NATO waters, not far from the US coast, although they say not far from the US coast, but it's still, it says thousands of miles. So um, that is quite far. We've also got North Korea now making threats. Of course, it wants to join with some of these other nuclear countries. We've got the BRICS countries coming together, buying even more gold. Turkey as well, central bank buying a lot of gold. China has just given the US a de-escalation warning. Otherwise, they're saying it's going to go so far that they will have to retaliate militarily. You see where this is going? Israel and Iran now, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And also, and I wanna correct this one, we have got hundreds, if not thousands, it looks like thousands to me, of military, US military vehicles and equipment, including tanks, uh, not far from the Ukraine border. It's actually in a port in Poland. Let me show you that video quickly now, because then I wanna show you the three main things that you need to prepare for right now. So here it is via Baltic Security on Twitter, and this is what everybody is seeing. Just wave after wave after wave of all of this US military equipment. So the rumors are that all of this equipment is obviously there for a reason and that the US is going to be sending ground troops into Ukraine and this is the first wave and all this other stuff. I mean, this goes on and on and on. But I just wanna bring your attention firstly to the most obvious point here that I'm surprised no one's really realized. What color are these vehicles and all of this equipment? Are they in a sort of green forestry camo, which is what they would need to be if they were going into the sort of Ukraine, Russia area? No, they're not. They're in desert cam. I mean, I'm amazed that these commentators don't realize the most obvious things like this. But I want to talk about the three main things then that I think it's important that you prepare for. Now, where did I get this idea from for this video today? I was reading a history book and it was talking about these pamphlets that were given out and developed for World War II. So it was based on the UK, the British military. They actually started work on warning people back in the early 1930s when a lot of things started happening, uh, conflict in Europe. But here's the point I wanna make. The actual conflict didn't start until 1939. So bear this in mind, early 1930s, people felt something was in the air, but it didn't really kick off properly until about 1939 with the pamphlets and the warnings and, and everything else going out. And I say this because I often get, you know, these comments, oh, doom and gloom, uh, he's just trying to scare everyone. There's not, there's nothing going on in the world. There's nothing wrong. There's no conflict. Whatever's going on over there has no impact on us. Nothing's going to happen. Everything's fine. The economy's fine. The stock market's fine. The housing market's fine. Everything's great. Um, I mean, these comments that I read from time to time, they're not trolling comments. I don't see it like that. I just see it as people who are, they have completely buried their head in the sand and they're so mind controlled by this media propaganda that they can't actually see what's going on. And you wanna think of it like the boiling frog scenario. We've all heard the boiling frog scenario, even though that's not true. <laughs> the frog does jump out a long time before the boil. But anyway, we'll use the example. And what actually happens then with situations like this, and even when I'm speaking to clients and they are all in on the stock market and all these stocks and they say, well, what are you seeing, Neil, that I'm not seeing? Because it all looks good to me. Well, it's because it's this whole step by step by step approach in that people can't see things. Let me give you an example. If you hadn't seen everything going on with Russia and Ukraine and you hadn't seen it over the last year and you woke up today, okay, so forget everything you've seen on the news, you woke up today and you saw all of this stuff going on, what would your reaction to that be? Because I can tell you what your reaction should be, and that is, oh my goodness, this is going to spill over. 
with NATO and Europe and the Baltic states and and what about China with Taiwan and all these other threats and Israel and Iran and what's going on in South America and the Middle East and all these other places. It's obvious what is going to eventually happen here. So what are the three things I wanted to bring your attention to then? Well, number well, there's three things. Here we go. Number one is conscription. Okay, so this is something that you should be aware of if you are under 40 years old and you are healthy, etc. Number two is an EMP attack, and I'll talk about why that's most likely in a moment. And number three is nuclear. I'm not even going to get into nuclear. I'm not really going to talk about it other than one short point, because even though the government puts out all this stuff and says, this is what you do to save your life and protect yourself, and we'll send you a text message before and all this sort of stuff, the realistic outcome of a nuclear exchange is that pretty much most of us will die anyway. And yes, I keep hearing all these stories about, oh, well, I would get my text message at work and I would drive home and get into my bunker and all this stuff. Look, it's very unlikely that that sort of scenario would ever happen. Even though I have clients that have nuclear bunkers, I just don't see them, for the most part, being able to get into them in time. Some people will, no doubt about it, but others who are you know, on business trips and all this, they're not gonna get into these bunkers. Let me, let me just say that. So there was this really interesting, actually, scenario that came out. So they brought together all of these professors and all these ex-military strategists and commanders and generals and things like that, and also some historians, which is useful. And they really talked about the different outcomes that would, would take place if WW3, we'll use, we won't use the keywords here, we don't want this video being uh, banned again. So if this actually happened, what would be the most likely outcome? And there's a lot of different things, but the most likely thing that they all said was there would be an EMP attack, which is an electri electrical magnetic pulse. And you've probably seen these in movies and, and you know things like that before. But what this does, it wipe, it knocks out all of the electrics in that area across the grid. This is most likely because it's in the playbook now for what militaries can and probably should do before they invade another, another place or if they're going to war or something like that. What did they then say? They talked about a massive nuclear strike, preemptive strike. So what does that mean? Well, it means, and by the way, after we've talked about all this, we're just gonna look at a few things that you really should be doing right now to prepare, because what I'm seeing is that the majority of people are being complacent. They're waiting for the government to tell them what to do. They're waiting for the government to say, okay, go out and store up some food. Have you got some water in reserve? Have you got this? Have you got that? They're waiting for the government to tell them. Don't ever wait for the government to tell you anything. And you know my approach, whatever the government tells me to do, I do the complete opposite and um, I'm doing great. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So after this nuclear exchange, they talk about a large scale bombing campaign. And again, we've seen this in previous conflicts, but here's the problem and I think what most people aren't prepared for. If you think of our supply chain and you think of all the things that you get, I know a lot of people, these days, they order something online that arrives the next day, next day delivery, or they go to the grocery store every couple of days and they buy their fresh vegetables, even their you know beautiful fruits and things from the other side of the world when it's winter time. Yeah, all of that will break down. <laughs> Let me just throw that out there. All of that will break down. What we see, and again, I'm just gonna bring in a lot of history here, because I really do love reading about all of these different and periods of history because the lessons that I learn from it and then pass on to you are just, well, they're so valuable because once you have these lessons, you can really summarize it all and, and prepare quite well for a lot of things that are coming. And you remember in previous videos, I said to look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs as a, a model, a learning model, but actually something that you can use to actually plan and prepare. So what are a couple of those things that we talked about previously? Well, what is number one? Breathing, you die without oxygen after a couple of minutes or whatever it is. So what if there was some sort of gas or, or the air was not breathable? Have you got a respirator or a gas mask? I know this seems OTT, but it's a, a very valid question. Have you got these sort of things? Have you got water? Have you got a way to actually treat and, and 
filter water? Have you got some food storage? But then you come on to other things like medical. Have you got a basic med kit? I know I've got all these things. Have you got basic medical supplies or do you rely on the chemist every couple of weeks for your, your top up? That's probably not the best idea because all of these things are going to stop or at least you're gonna lose 90% of the supply. And this is the other reason I said I'm concerned about the strategic petroleum, where at the moment it's just been, because there's an election coming up, they wanna keep gas prices down, et cetera, et cetera. They're just releasing so much of this. And if, if the US does have a conflict with either China, Russia, or with all these BRICS nations, well, it won't just be the US then, NATO, Europe, everyone else would get involved. It would be absolute chaos but what do you need to fight a war you need energy remember it's all about the energy and if you have nothing in the reserve well good luck because you can pretty much guarantee that the other people in this conflict have got a lot of energy but the other thing then well energy equipment and your financial situation because if you have an emp attack and it wipes out all the the, the electronics you think you're going to go to an ATM and withdraw cash. It's not going to work. You think you're going to be able to do online transactions. It's not going to work. You've got to think about a worst case scenario. And again, I get all the comments and, oh, this guy is a doom mongerer and whatever else. Yeah, okay. I might be a doom mongerer, but I've also visited 72 countries in my life. I was in the army for 10 years. Let's just say that I have seen and done a lot of interesting things. So I know what happens in different scenarios. And I think that if you had lived my life and been in different situations, you would be a little bit concerned about what's happening at the moment as well, and you would be better prepared. Again, whether you watch these videos for entertainment or whether you genuinely are serious about wanting to make sure you're prepared is completely up to you. But I know that when or if the SHTF occurs, that I'm not going to be caught off guard. Now, what else do they talk about here then? We've gone on to the you know, EMP, nuclear, bombing, etc. And then the next point is infrastructure. So it's actually hitting that critical infrastructure. So you probably wouldn't even have power and electricity and natural gas and heating anyway. Got your wood burner installed yet? But what else they talk about civil, mass civil unrest, which is different to civil unrest. This is mass civil unrest. Because of the exact reasons we just talked about, no one will be prepared. No one will have their food storage, their water filtration. They won't have any sort of alternative energy to, to, or heating. You'll then see what we talked about with the sea people uh, example story I shared with you not long ago, where what happened with the sea people well, my theory is why do they all band together and go raiding? And why do they only take food and not gold and things like that? Because gold was useless in those situations. What they needed was food. And by the way, I'm not saying gold will be useless in this situation. I'm just saying in that situation, it was useless to them. What they needed was food. So that is where the mass immigration would take place. Finally, they talk about famine there would be a mass famine because of fertilizer, because of the diesel would not be able to go to the, the farmers in the same quantity. It would be used for military equipment. But overall, they say you're pretty much going back to the, the dark ages, no matter what, with, <laughs> with all of this. So, so not good at all. Let's keep looking through then. Anything else we need to look at? Yep, medical supply shortages, it would say, would happen. Um, on a mass scale, devaluation of currency as well. So if there was a big conflict between BRICS, so that's your Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, South Africa, a lot of interesting stuff going on at the moment there as well. We've seen these big military drills. We're seeing a lot of Middle Eastern countries and even North Korea who wants to join BRICS as well. Um, Iran wants to join BRICS. It, it, this is going to be an absolute just nightmare. Now, the other thing that occurred was rationing books. So we had a lot of rationing during the last time. And it was, you know, meat, butter, sugar, canned goods, etc. Fuel, there was pretty much no normal cars on the road at that period because they had to conserve fuel. 
you needed a special permit just to get fuel at one point. People had to heat their homes with wood, so it's saying a lot of the fireplaces were smashed open. I could just imagine that now with a sledgehammer, everyone smashing open their fireplaces and trying to get the caps off the roof in, I mean, I'm talking in the UK, of course, just to get heating again. Now, this is interesting. Swapping and bartering was commonplace during this period. So everyone went back to barter. And some of the main things, you know, there's a lot of different things here, but they do talk about silver and gold. They do talk about cash, uh, whiskey and tools and all these other things. And it was also a, a case that pretty much every single man who was fit was called upon for conscription. But I thought this was quite interesting. So the media actually put out a checklist, and I saw this in quite a lot of media outlets at the moment, where they're saying that because of this escalation, it looks like it could spill over and that we could be in this, you know, they didn't call it a war, but they said military conflict. So they talked about a lot of stuff that people should have. So water filters, like I mentioned, it is your key thing. This is your bottom tier of survival under Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, gas masks, iodine, a lot of canned goods. Well, you should actually have the canned goods anyway, if you remember a year, two years, I've been talking about this. And not just from a survival perspective, but I said, if you look at a lot of these items that cost you know, $1 now, they're gonna cost $2 within the next couple of years, because you're gonna see 100% inflation on food, even if it takes three years or four years. So what are you doing? You're buying in bulk now, and then you're saving a lot of money. It's one way to beat inflation in the short term. So you should have some of this stuff anyway. Medical kits, yeah, we talked about that. Multivitamins, or as the Americans say, vitamins, a hydrogen peroxide, painkillers, etc. And then there's a whole host of other things. I can put this short list in the description here. But if you remember the other videos I've done, a couple of prepping videos, you can actually see the full list in that video of all of the equipment that I suggest, recommend that you have. I don't have any affiliate links or anything like that to any of these products. I just think this is what I would want to have if I were in your position. So overall then from those three main things, because I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff at the beginning, all these different threats that are going on, but the three things are conscription, nuclear and EMP. I just don't see how you're gonna avoid the EMP. If that actually happens, then you've gotta be able to um, actually operate without energy and electrical. The nuclear, don't even worry about it, as I've said before. If that happens, we're all dead anyway, so don't even worry about it. Let's just hope and pray that this doesn't ever happen. And the conscription aspect, well, that is gonna be an interesting one because if you are able-bodied and they send the MPs, i.e. the military police to your door to drag you away, um, this is a worst case scenario, obviously, not to worry anyone. So I hope the video today helped you a little bit with some preparedness. Overall, you've got to start thinking about these things now. It's so easy to just bury your head in the sand and say, you know what? This is just alarmist. None of this is ever gonna happen. There will never be any sort of conflict. But they probably thought that back in the day as well. You look at how many conflicts are going on around the world. If you're watching this video right now, you're sat in your home in the West, very comfortable, then just think, you were, the situation you're in right now is the same situation that some of these other people were in however many years ago. No one ever expects these things to happen until they do, of course. So overall, I would say start thinking about these things now. Start just taking some basic preparedness steps. Just do what you can with the resources and the environment that you live in. But other than that, Thank you so much for watching today. Hope it was useful for you. Take care, God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow.